About halfway up the Blue Mountains, in a village called Waramu, is Possum Park, which is named after the enormous concrete glider that's sitting in the playground. And in keeping with that big native creature artwork, there's also a plaque about Blinky Bill, the hero of a classic Australian children's book series. Its author and illustrator, Dorothy Wall, used to live in Warramoo. Initially, she lived down the highway in this Blacksland rental, which is now a denture clinic, but apparently it was too expensive. So in 1934, she had to move to a very basic house in Warramoo. She was a single mother at that point and struggling. The Warramu House is no longer standing, but you can still visit Florabella Pass, Dorothy's favourite walk, where she used to be inspired by the native flora and fauna. Like Mae Gibbs, a contemporary author illustrator, she was probably interested in the old man Banksias and possibly the flannel flowers, which I was very excited to see. Looking at Dorothy Wall's illustrations, you can see how closely she must have observed the local native animals. She absolutely nailed this magpie. And it's not surprising that she drew her inspiration from the bush, because a lot of people do. It's visually inspiring. That's probably why there are a fair number of art galleries in the Blue Mountains. Even the Blue Mountains Cultural Centre has a gallery and offers a lot of different exhibitions and classes and programs involving the visual arts. Along with all the art galleries, there are and always have been a lot of artists living in the Blue Mountains. Probably the most famous of them were Norman Lindsay and Adam Cullen, but I've always said that wherever it's cheap and pretty, you're going to find a lot of artists and writers. Our friend Paul de Moulin used to live in Lura for years, and we have a lot of his stuff hanging on our walls. Most of his paintings show places he's been, like the Czech Republic. and Sydney. And France. But one of them is a fantasy landscape, something he's made up. to Dorothy Wall, who made things up and then drew them and wrote about them. She had a visual imagination. I have a visual imagination too. I see things in my head and then I describe them, which means that I can draw a lot of my characters. This is Pagan from Pagan's Crusade, 
He's cheeky and funny and really smart. And this is Birdie from the Bogle books. She's small but brave and constantly under threat. This is Thaddeus Roth from Evil Genius who is suave and clever and cunning and magnetic. And this is Bertie's employer, Alfred the Bogler, who's crusty but soft, a real father figure. And this is Megan from Shelter. She's a middle-aged survivor and very anxious. A fair while ago, I did get to illustrate a few of my books which meant that I got to draw some of my own characters. Um, I illustrated The Horrible Holiday which is about a family that goes on a trip and everything goes wrong but the main character Kevin loves it all anyway. and Daryl's dinner, which meant that I had to do a lot of sketching of magpies. In case you haven't seen the other episodes, this book is all about a baby magpie that keeps eating the wrong things. And I also drew this graphic novel, The Secret of Hermitage Isle, which unfortunately didn't sell very well. I actually drew, I actually drew this while I was pregnant um, because at that stage, for some reason, my brain wasn't working properly and I could draw but not write. This one is all about medieval monks on a quest to find the relics of a dead saint on this island that's full of hermits. So yeah, as a person with a strong visual imagination, I find the Blue Mountains a great place to live because it gives me a lot of visual inspiration.